Welcome everyone to Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about instant gratification because the world wants everything right now. We want happiness right now. We want money. We want a good relationship. We want all of these wonderful things in life and we want it right now. So we're going to be breaking down that idea of instant gratification in today's episode. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and to share this video and our audio. Now, instant gratification is going to be dealing with modern society. Again, we talked about that on the last episode. Many people want things immediately, and we're living in a world where we can get things very quickly. Amazon Prime, for example, when it came out, in two days, you can get your item. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your home. There's even an option if you want your item quicker, next day or same day. Now, you might have to pay a little bit more money, but what is money for the sense of comfort? Because if I can get things without leaving my home, I can get things immediately. And there's so many other ones, DoorDash, GoPuff, right? There's so many places that we can go to to get the things we want quickly. And what do you think that's going to do to society? I can get what I want, when I want, how I want, as quick as I want. That's going to lead us into a different type of mindset. I need things done now. And there's a positive side and a negative side to that. The good side is we feel good, right? There's going to be more negatives than positives, as many things. And we have to look at that positive or that instant gratification as being something that is going to be temporary to our happiness. Because the quicker we get things, the quicker we expect things. And that's important to understand. The quicker we get things, the quicker we expect things. So for things that take longer periods of time, we won't be as patient anymore because we're looking for instant gratification. If you have been working a job, for example, let's say you've been making $15 an hour and you get fired or you leave your job and now you're making $7.50 an hour. Would you accept that $7.50 job? Now, maybe the circumstances are going to dictate that you have no choice, depending on if you move to a place that that's the highest paying job, or if you're just down and you're lucky, you need something quick. Necessarily, you're making less than half of what you have been earning. So it might not be the most ideal situation, but the problem is we don't expect that anymore. We don't expect to work for $750. We are worth more right? We are worth more money than that. We're worth $15. At least that's the minimum. Sometimes we have to take a step back in order to take two steps forward. But at the same time, we have to understand our worth, our value. Because if we just sell ourselves short, then what are we necessarily doing? We're just giving ourselves away and we're lowering our self-worth, our value overall. But instant gratification is just going to be talking about how we get things quicker but it does correlate into our self-value. Because if we get things quick, do we necessarily value the things that we have received? Many people don't because we replace things so quickly. We get a new smartphone every single year. Just how I replace my smartphone every single year, I'm staying up to date with modern society, but at the same time, I'm getting the instant gratification of, I have the newest, latest, greatest thing in my hand. And is that a dangerous way of living, right? To be up to date with the newest, latest, and greatest. Not necessarily. But if our mindset is operating under, I need this in order to be happy, then we're getting into some murky water. Because now we're placing our happiness on a contingency. If I need this. So the idea of instant gratification is going to say, I want things immediately. And if I don't get it, the world is going to suffer. I'm going to put out a mean tweet. I'm going to give a bad review at a company or a restaurant just because I didn't get what I wanted, okay? Now, there's a difference between putting out a review that's negative and then a review that's hateful. There's many hateful reviews out. Go on Google, just go to a restaurant, for example, and just read what they said. Oh, the fries were cold because they took too long. Okay, instant gratification, right? You could have just said, hey, fries are cold. Can I get some new fries? They would have said, not a problem. 
That's customer service. They understand that. But at the same time, it inconveniences you because now all of a sudden I have to go back to this restaurant because I got cold fries or my burger is not the way I want it. Instant gratification. I want things done perfectly. So we're living in a society where things have to be done perfectly to the T. And if someone gets out of line, does something different, oh man, all hell breaks loose. Because if we don't figure out, okay, I don't need this, then we can say, okay, what do I need? I believe it was Warren Buffett. He said, if you want something in life, Amazon, Walmart, put it in the cart. If you're on Amazon, of course, put it in your cart and wait a week. See if you need it. Same thing if you're going to a grocery store. Do your grocery list a week in advance if you can. And only buy the things on that grocery list. I have a grocery list and I make sure I shop religiously to that grocery list. Because when I go into that grocery store, I see some potato chips. I see some cakes, some cupcakes. I see some things I never saw in my life before. And I said, well, that looks pretty good. Instant gratification. I want something good in my life. But then at the same time, got to read the nutritional fact, the label, read it. Well, too much sugar. The fat's wrong. There's no protein in it. Mm -mm, not going to work for me, right? And it's not that I can't enjoy life. It's just that I am going to refuse a sugary carb sweet before making sure my life is healthy. And going into the gym idea, why do you think so many people quit the gym, right? They go get their gym membership. They get a trainer. They say new year, new me, and they start going to the gym. But then they say, you know what? This is not for me a month or two in. Instant gratification. They're not willing to put in the work. So what do you think happens to a society that's not willing to put in the work? They're going to be lazy. Look what happened past year, maybe even currently still happening. There's a labor shortage. Where do you think that came from? Do you think that was just automatic? Oh, there's not enough people. Everyone died off because of the C word. No, 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 no. That's not the case. People realize, well, the government's paying me money. I don't have to go to work. I'm going to stay home. Now I'm lazy instant gratification. I get to stay home where I'm comfortable in my comfort zone, in my little box, and I don't make moves. I don't make adjustments. I stay exactly where I am. So yeah, we stay exactly where we are, but there's a detriment to that action. Now we don't want to move. This feels so good. I don't want to leave. I like this so much. I don't want to change it. And many people don't. Many people just accept what they get. That's complacency right? That's stagnancy. That's the most dangerous place a person can be. Because if they don't want to make any changes for the better, for the positive, then that's where they're going to be for the remainder of their life. But if they stay there, guess what happens? Eventually they start going downhill because if they stay exactly where they are and we're living in an economy that's going like this and keeps moving up, 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 we're not moving up with society. We're not moving up with the economy. We're staying exactly where we are. So as the economy is changing, our life is staying the same. So we need to make sure that we are always making for progress, right? We're not just looking for a quick fix. We're looking for something that's going to be substantial. And we're not looking for something quick either. We're looking for something that's going to be long lasting. Things nowadays are made so flimsy where if you get something that's a low quality, you're going to have to keep buying that over and over again. Now, it's not going to be expensive, but it's still a task, right? We have to go out and keep getting what we need. And the same thing with instant gratification. We keep getting the things we want quickly. Eventually, we're going to want them quicker and quicker and quicker. And so at the point where we're going to press a button and everything's going to be teleported to us or flown via a drone to our house within the minutes. That's not a far-fetched way of thinking if we look at what's next in society. Because we're done with a horse-drawn carriage, eventually there's going to be flying cars and there's going to be people just going to the moon for fun. I mean, that's already happening. There's already flying cars. It's just not the societal standard yet. And the same thing is going to happen when we want to get to our destinations. We want instant gratification. Let's just hypothetically speak here. Let's say there is a teleportation type of system where we can go into a teleporter and go to anywhere we want in the world instantly. Of course, there would have to be two points of access. So there have to be two teleporters. You can go in this teleporter and you would teleport to the other location where the teleporter is. 
That is an instant gratification thing, an instant type of teleportation. But there's a part of life that has to remain consistent, constant, because if it doesn't, guess what happens? We fail to see the journey. We have a process in the brain. It's called building blocks. If we don't have the building blocks to what gives us the mindset that we have, our mindset is going to be lacking in the areas that we needed to be proficient in. So for example, let's say I didn't want to learn addition and subtraction in first grade. I said, I don't want to learn addition and subtraction. My parents agreed because apparently parents listen to kids now or Kids can say what type of gender they want to be, and they can say, well, I want to be a boy today, or I want to be a girl today, and they're the opposite sex. And the parents are like, okay, good for you. I support you. Hmm. Okay. Whatever. But they say, I don't want to learn addition and subtraction. The parent says, yeah, sounds good to me. Now, of course, there's going to be the curriculum that they have to pass, but they don't do it, right? right? They just get passed for it, right? And especially for kids who are going to be your troublesome students or they're going to be your heavy hitters, what I like to call them, those students are going to be passed because guess what? We don't want them in our hair anymore. And that way of thinking eh, is whatever, right? Instant gratification. I don't want this kid anymore because my life is going to be better without them. Hmm, interesting, right? So now that this kid is in third grade, so now this kid is going to be learning multiplication, but they don't know addition and subtraction. Do you need addition and subtraction for multiplication? In a sense, yes, right? You have to understand, okay, well, if I'm doing three times four, what does that mean? It makes it basically means four plus four plus four, or three plus three plus three plus three. That's what it means, right? And then we can get into the whole division. It's the same thing, right? It's just the same thing. We need the building blocks. If we don't have the building blocks, then how can we get to the next level? So a kid nowadays, if you ask them, hey, I'm going to make a phone call. Make sure you answer your phone. How do you think they're going to answer their phone? They're going to answer their phone like this. This is not a cell phone. This is Will Smith smack. This is going to be a smack someone's going to get. We don't want to hit anybody, but they do this. They go, this is my phone. This is not a phone. This is a hand. But... If we ask a Gen Z, a millennial, uh, anyone before the 90s, this is a phone, right? Hello, right? We are saying this is a phone, right? Because that's what we had. We had the rotary, we had the rotary phones. We had the cordless phones. Now everything's a smartphone. Everything's flat. Instant gratification. We have the world at our fingertips right now. If we want to answer instant gratification... Back then, teachers would say, you're not going to have a calculator in your pocket always. Instant gratification. Now we have a calculator. We don't know how to type in the numbers. We can ask our phone to say, hey, what's this number? What's 7 times 7? And it will tell us. We don't even have to do anything. We are dumbed down as a society. But then at the same time, we want things quick. We want to be happy. We want to be fed. And it doesn't necessarily matter if it's nutritious and healthy. We want our belly to be full because our brain is tricky. Our brain is the son of a gun because our brain is going to want the things and is going to want the things that are going to save or conserve the most energy, which is dangerous, right? Because the brain is trying to say, hey, let's not do too much. We want to conserve some energy just in case we need it. And I have talked about this several times on the podcast because This is so important. The brain is our enemy in a sense, but it's also our greatest asset because it's saying, well, let's just take it easy. Let's not do too much work because if we do too much work, then we're going to be tired and we don't want to be tired. We want to be comfortable, right? We want to be in our comfort zone. We want to find things that are going to be the easiest path A to B. That's why people like Amazon That's why people like GoPuff or DoorDash or Favor is because they don't have to expend any energy in order to get what they want. So if the brain understands I can get what I want with no energy expended, that's what the brain is going to gravitate toward. But we can train our mindset to think in a different manner. David Goggins, for example, he has a very strong mindset. 
where he's like, no matter the challenge, I'm going to show up each time. And it's going to be difficult for people to get to that mindset. It's literally neuroplasticity, changing the way we think. I'm not sure if I talked about that subject yet, but it is a blog that's coming out, neuroplasticity. Once we get that out, we're going to understand that we can change our mind in any facet or any manner we want it to be. And that's going to be key for many people changing their lives, evolving their lives, going from poor to middle class, from middle class to higher class. That is the key. That is the key that's going to unlock all the doors in your life, right? Is your mind. But at the same time, our mind is lazy. Our subconscious mind is powerful, even though it's just a whisper. So we need to get out of this way of thinking instantly in instant gratification because it's just going to instantly give us hardship. We have a saying in the motivation world, coaching world, you can choose hard now, easy later, or easy now, hard later, right? And the hard later is going to be your retirement, your older years, things like that. So if you choose easy now, we can go to McDonald's, we can get instant gratification, we can stay in the home, we can work from home. There's so many different things that we can do. But then all the health effects start to come and compound later in the years. We're not getting enough steps in our day because we're literally sitting in our home from our office to the sofa. And that's what we do. That's our day. And then we go to the restroom a few times. We probably do maybe 200 steps. And that's not many steps in a given day because you are going to be eating or consuming more calories, most likely if you're not leaving your home. Because if you're not leaving your home, you don't need to consume a large amount of calories. But the brain is saying, well, I'm hungry and I want to fill my belly and I want to gorge myself. It takes 15 minutes for the brain to actually realize it's full. So while you're eating your meal, you can actually be full already, but you keep on eating until your brain saying, hey, we're full, right? It's the same thing with our receptors in our body. If we get a pain response, a negative response, our brain sends a signal and saying, hey, that hurts. Oh, ouch. Same thing with the belly or when you're hungry. Hey, we're hungry. Oh, we're full. It's a signal, right? And it's a very quick signal. It's not in the sense of, oh, I hit someone and they're not going to feel the pain until next week. That doesn't happen, right? It's going to be almost instantly. So we get things quick in our life, right? And the best way for us to understand something is to experience it head on. If you're out of shape right now, go run in the treadmill, go run around the block and learn just how out of shape you are because you don't necessarily realize it. Your subconscious mind is not going to make it forefront in your brain, your way of thinking until you go out and you experience it and say, well, well, I'm out of shape. I need to fix it. And you might get to the part where you're like, I need to fix this and you don't. But then you might get to the part where saying I need to fix this and I'm going to fix it. So instant gratification, sometimes you have to learn what you need rather than what you want, because instant gratification is going to be more what we want than what we need. We don't need our cell phones. We want our cell phones. We don't need to gorge ourselves on fast food and candies and sweets. We want to gorge ourselves on fast foods and sweets. Dr. CB, for example, he has diet plans where you can just go eat berries and nuts and you would have a better nutrition for that reason. But we have all these distractions, all these restaurants that are giving us the easy path. I don't have to cook because cooking takes some time. I don't have to go to the grocery store because going to the grocery store takes some time. I can just go to the corner, go into an establishment or not even in a drive-thru would suffice, and I can get my food. Instant gratification. And that is making us lazy as a society. That is making us unhealthy as a society. It's making us obese as a society. And it's causing us to shun people as a society. Because we want things quickly. And if something is not done quickly, we need to rebel. We need to say, you know, we don't want this. We don't like this. We're going to rebel. We're going to talk out. We're going to speak out. Things need to be fixed. Why do you think Karen and Ken are so popular nowadays? I'm not talking about the Barbies. I'm talking about the people. People who are so forefront and saying, I want this now. 
please me. Do as I say. Because if you don't, all hell is going to break loose. And sometimes it does. They lose their mind. They become uncontrollable. Their thoughts, their feelings, and their actions are out of the window because they just want what they want. Instant gratification. They want what they want. Selfishness. We have to get way of that thinking into a more positive mindset, into a more giving mindset, into a more patient type of mindset. And I talk to people all the time. How do I do it? How do I know how to get people to operate in a new way of thinking? It's patience. I believe my college thesis is about patience and teaching. I wrote a whole, I think it was 25 pages, something like that. That's somewhere on the world. I don't have it. My sister took my laptop and I don't know where that laptop is, but the paper was on that laptop and we didn't have Google Drive or anything. We just had the thumb drives and I don't even know if I put it on a thumb drive, but what I do know is I don't have that essay anymore, but it's somewhere on the world because I know it was going to be posted. So I would have to go out, find it, and then of course, read it and cringe at my younger self in the in in the writing that I have done because even in 2019 when I wrote my first blog for Revan Concepts I was like ooh this is not good but the progression right I'm not looking to have instant satisfaction in being the best writer in the world I understand there's a process I understand that this steps or these steps that I'm taking in order to become a better writer is going to be enjoyable for me. Same thing in the gym. I might not be able to lift 225 today, but if I lift 100 pounds today, I can make progress slowly to get to my goal. Instant gratification is only going to leave you to the compounds of what you are right now. And we can't live in right now in the sense of our body, our mind. We need to transcend that and we need to start to focus more on, okay, I'm going to get this in my life, but it's a process. This is my goal. And it's not that we're greedy, it's that we're ambitious. And that ambition is different than if what I can get right now and what is different than what I can get later is going to be a huge part for me to make the changes. So there's a lot to instant gratification. There's more to it, but of course, If you are looking to get out of that way of thinking, head over to reverendconcepts.com. Of course, you can read a blog, you can watch motivational videos, but what you're going to be looking for is some coaching, right? So you're going to reach out, get some coaching, and then get yourself into a better way of thinking. If you have any questions, of course, email me, coachingandsession at gmail.com. If not, reverendconcepts.com, get yourself some coaching. I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching and Session. Until then, everyone, take care.